last time we did after sound i think we did yeah um chemical effects of electrical current okay right uh, so today we'll do some uh, uh we'll okay. do electrical pumps and motion okay that's fine with you yes sir okay so this example uh, there is one problem here can you and you have paper and pen with you yes sir i just try it out um the speed of the object is on sec where is my here okay Yes, yeah, so the speed of the object is five point three three meters per second. Now, uh, what you need to find is the average speed. Okay. Yeah, so the average speed, the average speed is five point three three. So, what is the definition of average speed? It's the total distance covered divided by the total time. So object travels 16 meters in four seconds. Now it's 16 meters in two seconds. So 32 by six. So it is uh, five times, and then two six. Okay, it's five one third. Uh, you said five point three three, right? Yeah. So try to get it in fractions, mixed fractions. I think that will okay. uh, that will if you drag that, it's not going wrong. It's up to you, right? Okay. In one. No, no, no. The car is two thousand kilometers is that? Uh, have you got the answer? Yes, sir. Um, fifty kilometers per hour and thirteen eight by nine meters per second. Uh, is this correct? Four thousand kilometers per hour. Right, eight five. Four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Right. That's what I was wondering. It's too high. So it's fifty kilometers per hour, right? Yeah, and thirteen eight by nine meters per second. So this is a reasonable speed, right? You you travel in vehicle. So yes. And meters per second means uh, kilometers to meters it will increase by factor thousand, and uh, hour to second, uh, the thing will for one hour it's traveling that much, for one second it will travel that much less. So it's divided by three thousand six hundred. You can remember this way, right? So kilometer to meter conversion factor is thousand, and when you convert to meters, the value will increase. So it's multiplied by thousand. And per hour speed, and the per second, the distance travelled will be less. Okay, so so it's divided by three thousand six hundred. This is how much. Five hundred by thirty-six, which is thirteen eight by nine. Eighteen. Yeah, eighteen five. So two fifty by eight. Okay, it is in that way. This is one twenty-five by nine. Right. Nine 
Nine ones are nine. Thirty-five. And this is twenty-seven. Thirteen eight seven. Three five nine, right? Yes, sir. You have a second. And this will be what? Yes, sir. Right. So basically, here the odometer is the one which shows the uh, displacement or the distance actually. Okay. So. <coughs> okay. Uh, the next one. Pushas. Okay. Um. Maybe this long pull. So her average speed would be, her average speed would be one eighty meters by um. Thirty meters per second. And your average velocity would be zero meters per second. First, you can draw some sort of a figure. A uh, ninety meter long pull, right? It is ninety meters, right? And then she covers one eighty meter in one minute by swinging from one end to other end and back. So she is going this way and then coming back. So this is one eighty meters in one minute. Right, and the average. So her average speed is three meters per second. Three, sorry, three meters per second, not thirty. Three meters per second. Okay. And her average velocity is zero meters per second because she's ending back at the same spot. And okay. since velocity is a vector quantity. It will be. Do so, these concepts of uh, displacement and distance, right? Yes, sir. So, what's the displacement? Yes, sir. Displacement is the distance. So, so I know the dis Yeah, the distance between the start position and the end position. Displacement is change in position. And distance is total distance or total. What do you call? It? And the distance is total path, path, path yeah, path path covered by the object. Which is path length? Okay, so displacement does not uh, bother whether you uh, roamed around somewhere and came back to the same point. What matters is what is the intercept? Where you reach finally? Okay, the path does not matter. And how fast you went to that final position? It is how fast the position is changing. The distance, the displacement will always assume that from the starting point to the ending point, you went in a straight line. Okay, and since in this case starting point and ending point are same, so you do not move at all. So displacement is zero, and velocity is zero. Okay. What about this one? Starting from stationary. Six meters per second in thirty seconds. Oh. Then breaks. Velocity comes down. Oh, okay. Meters per second in five seconds. Calculate the acceleration in both cases. The first episode. Uh, Paraphrase the problem. You know what is paraphrasing? Yes, sir. Uh, so you write uh, whatever information is there uh, in sort of a sentences which is suitable for you. Okay. Mm, okay. First, you said is stationary, right? Starting so I'll put u equal to zero because u stands for initial velocity, and then uh, he's attaining a speed of six meters per second, and the time taken is thirty seconds. Okay, after he is applying brakes, I mean the velocity is decreasing to four meter per second. Four meters per second, and this takes uh, five seconds. This duration. So, do we always have to write it as meter into second to the power of minus one, yeah. or can we also write it as meter per second? It doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah. Okay, writing this is more convenient. When writing with pen and paper, I think by second is convenient. But for uh, printing, that is a standard that's being followed now. So I think it's okay. As long as you don't get confused, it's fine. 
Right. So there are, there are two parts of this motion. This is the first 30 seconds and then the next five seconds. So acceleration, this uh, first part is how much? Um, from... Acceleration is um, one by five meter per second square. Okay, you know this equation of motion, V equal to E plus AT? Well, the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration into the time, yeah. Right, so it is six minus zero. That's the first kinematic equation, right? Yes. Six minus zero by time taken thirty. Right. So the unit will be meter per second. It is one foot. <coughs> right. And the second one, uh, it's acceler accelerating or decelerating? Decelerating at okay. Okay. two by five meter per second square deceleration well the acceleration would be minus two by five meter per second square okay can you give the value minus two by five meter per second square de uh, acceleration if you're talking about deceleration then it's two by five meter per second square Point four. Okay. So first one you got is point two. Yes, sir. And uh, the one second. by five. And second one I got minus two by five, which is the same as zero point four. Okay. So again, it's the same formula. Acceleration is b minus u. That is four minus six divided by five. That is two by five. And this is point four. Minus. Okay. Okay. So point four. Okay, uh, now you know how to plot uh, the distance versus time graph. See, we have these equations of motion, right? They are. Yes, sir. Mm, I'll write it here. V equal to U plus AT. And what is the second equation? Um, the second equation, so I don't really, uh, yeah, I don't know the second. S is equal to. Something a uh, t square or something, or is that the third equation? Yeah, it's the third equation. There's something with t square. Oh, never mind. It's the second equation only. Uh, what does s stand for? S is the distance uh, or dis displacement. Displacement. Yes. And the third equation is what? Um, u square plus two a t e two a s. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Not really. All these equations are valid for which condition? These equations are, are derived under what condition? Uniform acceleration. Okay, acceleration. Acceleration so should not change. So acceleration is not changing means the force which is creating this motion is uniform because if. Uh, which in place the force creating the motion is uniform because of what difficult to immediately okay mass is not going to change okay so if acceleration is uniform means the force which is creating this motion is also uniform yes okay uh, okay there is the assumption for this one okay here what are the variables you see on the right side on the right side Good. i see Okay. I see U, T, and A. Most of the times, U, T, and A. Okay, uh, on the left side also, velocity, V, displacement, right. U, T, yes. Okay, so we have three equations. So at the maximum, they can be unknowns. Okay, uh, unknown should be three. Okay. 
if you have you know this no if you have two equations we can solve for two unknowns okay for solving for three equa three unknowns we need three equations four unknowns means we need four equations you know that or you just accepted now okay we'll figure that out as we go along right so here among this five at least two should be known time is an independent quantity it is known there's no nothing to do with the, the problem time is always running okay and the initial velocity is sort of an initial condition which should be known okay so these two quantities will be given from that we can find the other three okay so in this uh, if it is a 1d motion we can uh, say uh, we can instead of this we can use x there is a x is along the uh, path of the body okay so here we are uh, plotting distance versus time graph okay and here uh, this is the distance right yes distance is same as displacement when the uh, velocity direction is not changing okay so so from this can you say what is the acceleration our first thing is velocity and what is velocity speed with direction yeah and what is speed distance by time yeah you can say rate of uh, how fast it does rate of change of position how fast the path is covered right and velocity is how fast what can you say position changes okay so velocity is change in position change is always related with delta and what what is change in time how do you represent that delta, uh, delta t right so this is the uh, velocity okay so here you have plot of x let's call this distance as x and time is t okay so from this graph can you find the velocity um yes you can actually delta x by delta t is slope do you know that because if we if we uh, take two points here okay and this vertical thing is delta x right and the horizontal interval is delta t right slope of the line is delta x by delta t change in the y thing you have to change the horizontal thing you know that thing for a line so i didn't really understand what you said uh you know what is slope of a line um yes what is it, i guess it's how tilted it is i guess yeah. or it's basically yeah so this x and y axis okay so uh, it, this is my line okay the line one and there is one more line here the line two so which one has got more slope um line one yes because it's more steep okay yes. so the, exactly measure that uh, amount of steepness we can do this thing we can take uh, two points like this okay and uh, make a triangle like this okay so and then this is changing y right so From, whichever triangle has the most area it has the highest slope uh, so this changes delta let's call it delta y corresponding to the line one and this is delta x the other is delta x one and this is delta y one this much for delta y two for the last second line and this is but delta the del it so it will remain delta x one yeah which is equal to 
delta x. So shouldn't it remain delta x one? You can call it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So slope one is delta y one by delta x one. Okay. And uh, slope two is delta y two by delta x two. Right. And delta y one is greater. Right. Yes. Sir. So, then in that case, slope one is greater than slope two. That is the relation between the two. Uh, so basically, I want to say the slope is changing y divided by change in x. Y is whatever is happening in the vertical uh, coordinate. Okay, and uh, x is the what is there the horizontal co coordinate. So in this case, the which the the vertical coordinate is delta x, and uh, the horizontal one is tan, so delta t. So slope is this one, and uh, how do you find slope here? We have, uh, if you know these two points, so then it will be um, delta. The slope of the line will be delta x, but oh well, yeah, okay, that's what you've written. Uh, we can get uh, upper uh, upper some value of slope. If you draw a dotted line from ten, we'll get some value of time, right? Okay. And from twenty, is another value of time. This you can read from the graph. Twenty, uh, so ten is here. So let's approximately say it's fifteen. Okay, I'm not exact. And twenty thirty say it is approximately middle. So it's thirty. Okay, I'm just taking approximate values. So how much is uh, delta x for this line? If I take these these two points. Delta x will be. I'm taking this point and this point. Um, delta x will be. Wait, delta x is vertical, right? Okay, yeah, never mind. Um, delta x will be ten kilometers. And delta t. And delta t is equal to fifteen minutes. Yeah. So from there you can get velocity as. Uh, Ten divided by fifteen. Fifteen kilometers per minute. This you can convert to hours. Okay. So this is the basic idea. You can just. Yes, okay. sir. This comes in the definition of velocity. Velocity is how fast the position is changing. Uh, position changing is uh, delta x, and how fast means it's just divided by the time taken for that change. Delta x per delta x, which is equal to slope of x t curve. Yes, sir. Sixteen. So, this is what we can find. And what about acceleration? The acceleration. Won't that need a velocity time graph? Yeah. <coughs> Acceleration is delta v by delta t, right? Yes. Rate of change of velocity. So, uh, so velocity is slope of the uh, curve, and this curve is a line. So, if if you take these two points, you get velocity, right? And similarly, if you take another two points, uh, will the velocity be different here? No, sir. Since it's a uniform graph, no. Since it's a straight line, property of the straight line is slope is same everywhere between any any two points. Yes, sir. Okay, so velocity is not changing from time to time. Then. Yes. So that way, delta v is zero because velocity is not going to change from time to time. Is that clear? Yes. Because if you want to find velocity at uh, say at forty seconds, what is the so I'll go to forty, the time corresponding to forty, okay, and then I draw a small triangle there. So it will be between forty and forty point zero zero one second per minute. So small triangle I'll find the slope, and for a straight line it does not matter which two points I choose whether it's those points or the far away points, the slope is always same. So velocity at forty is same as velocity at fifty. 
and that's it. Change in velocity between any two time is zero. Here will be delta t whatever amount of time t. So since the numerator is zero and the denominator is not zero, the answer is zero. And because we are taking a finite interval of time in the denominator, so so when the plot of x versus t is a straight line, that means that the velocity is not changing. So acceleration is zero. Okay, that you can see from this equation. So is equal to u t plus half t square. No? So equation of line means t square term will not be there. Equation of yes. line y equal to m x plus c, right? There is no there is no x square in that. Okay, so yeah. straight, straight means x should the power of x should be one, and power of y should be one, and there can be a constant. There should not be any t square term. And since acceleration is zero, so this uh, uh, the second term is vanishing. Okay, that is why the plot of uh, distance versus time is a straight line. This is the equation of straight line. The remaining thing. This is straight line, right? If you don't have a second term, yes. Yeah. That's why it's a straight line. It is consistent yeah. with acceleration being zero. Okay. Similarly, if you put acceleration zero here, v equal to u. That's what we we see, right? The velocity is not changing. And so, in the first equation, put acceleration zero, you get the same thing, v equal to u. Okay. So everything is uh, consistent with each other. Yes. Okay. Next. Uh, Take the next complication. Here the distance is changing with time. In this fashion, previously it was a straight line. Distance is a time. Now it is a curve. Okay. Now is the velocity changing from point to point? Yes, it is. So velocity is delta x by delta t. So it's basically straight. So is slope changing from point to point? Yes, it is. Okay, let me draw a slope at this point and uh, at this point. So slope increasing with time or decreasing with time? Slope is increasing. As time increases, slope is increasing. Okay, slope is increasing. Okay, that means velocity is increasing or decreasing. Velocity is increasing. Okay, that means acceleration is positive or negative. Positive. Is acceleration increasing? Um, like, let me see. Uh, need not be. Well, suppose velocity with time is changing as a in straight line fashion. In this case, what is acceleration? Yes, yeah, so the acceleration is the same. Acceleration is delta v by delta t, right? It's two meter per second square. So this is equal to slope of v t curve. Right? And this v t curve is a straight line, so slope is not changing. So acceleration is not changing with time. So Increasing decreasing does not make sense here. Okay, and uh, acceleration is greater than zero, and it's also a constant. Yes, sir. And what is meant by constant? It remains same throughout. Not not changing with time. Yes, sir. Constant means. Uh, Not changing with time. Okay. Okay. 
okay uh, if you look at this equation when acceleration is constant okay the equation of x versus time which is second degree equation x to the t plus half t square okay so it is not a straight line when acceleration is not zero the x versus t curve it's not a straight line because of the second term half t square okay and that's what this thing is showing it's not a straight line but a curve and you know equation of a parabola uh you have heard of parabola yes sir uh what is the general equation of parabola i don't know the general equation i just know what the parabola is like okay. like your general equation of line is y to mx plus c right uh, equation of line is y equal to mx plus c where m and c are constants this is a line okay similarly y equal to a x square plus b x plus c it's a parabola oh okay this is a next next higher complication right for the line we have d in x term and the constant term that is same as this one this is like a straight line part in addition to that we are introducing this one x square term and a is a number okay oh okay sir this is a parabola so this is of that form uh, t square term is there t term is there constant is not there okay so even if constant is zero it's still a parabola even the line uh, y could mx is still a equation of line with c equal to zero okay so this is the equation of a parabola uh, if e is constant and this is actually a parabola if the acceleration is constant this is distance versus time plot Okay. Okay. Now we are uh, looking. Okay. Previously we saw x versus t graph for acceleration constant and acceleration zero. Here acceleration is zero because velocity is not changing, and here acceleration is constant. Well, now we look at velocity versus time graph. Okay. This is the first case. So here, what do you observe here? This left graph. Velocity is what? What's your first? Um, here the velocity is the same throughout, so the acceleration is zero. It's constant, yeah. Here velocity is increasing, right, with time? Yes, sir. So first thing you observe is acceleration is greater than zero. This velocity is increasing. now to get the value of acceleration it is delta v by delta t and this thing looks, looks like a straight line um so yeah this. so the accelerate it's a straight line so the acceleration will be constant yeah because it's a line and to get the value you can choose these two points a and d and whatever is this uh, velocity difference i'll put a approximate value 19 38 minus 9. I'll call it approximately 19 units meter per second, and time is approximately it's exactly 10. So acceleration yes. 19 meter per second divided by time is 10 seconds. So this is 1.9 meter per second. So this is velocity time graph of uh, Uh, acceleration being zero and a constant acceleration. Okay, we won't go beyond constant acceleration. We will not consider cases where the acceleration is not constant. We will stick to constant acceleration. Right. Ah, uh, okay. Now, what do you observe? Uh, observe in this graph, the left one. Sir, um, one second. Um, um, okay. Yeah, the. deceleration is constant in this left left one the deceleration the, basically the acceleration is constant because it's a straight line uh, first acceleration slope is negative okay there is acceleration is negative and the value of acceleration is minus you can take some two points you can take one here okay and then three here
I have defined this delta y. Uh, then let me approach it, make it 19. 19 divided by 2. Meter per second and second. So it is meter per second square. Is that okay? What is happening in the right graph? Again, the in the right graph, the 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 acceleration is well. The velocity keeps increasing, but the acceleration is constant at different times. Okay, the first part. What is acceleration? It can basically be considered into like okay, you can talk like four different graphs, basically almost. Okay, the first one acceleration is how much? This is the approximate time, right? So this is say approximately I'll say six. Okay, the time is six. Time interval. And the velocity is changing from uh, let me call this uh, 24. Is that okay? Yes. So this is acceleration of the first part. I find it is positive. Unit is second square. And this second part, what is acceleration? Let me call it A2. Right? So this time is. We call it 10.5 time interval. Between this and this, okay. And the change in this one is uh, 11. We need to make it 11. Okay. And the sign is minus because time delta D is always positive, but delta V here is negative. Yes, sir. Right. Similarly, you can find A3. Um, A3 will be so distance is four seconds. Okay, A3 will be negative, sorry, positive, and A4 is negative, right? Okay, comparing A1 and A3, which one is more? A1, yes, because that is more steep, yes, and comparing A2. And E4, I'm just comparing the signs, not the uh, with the negative sign. Uh, I'm just comparing the magnitudes. So, which one is more decelerating? Um, more decelerating, I think, was A2 okay. because that is more steep, but the thing is, it's coming down. Basically, the steepness is the slope, it's coming down, it's negative, it's just taking the magnitude. So which is decelerating more is the second part. Okay, so this is a plot of uh, this is the case of acceleration being constant in intervals in parts. Okay, overall the acceleration is changing; it's not a constant. But if you look at piecewise, within that interval, acceleration is constant. So it's still an easy problem to handle. Okay, yes. Yeah. Function of time. Then uh, we don't have to bother about that because that is out of syllabus. Uh, so, position, path length, displacement. This you know, right? This, this one I have been discussing. Yes, sir. Displacement. Uh, this, this, these graphs you understood? Displacement as a function of time. The displacement is a yeah. okay. Average velocity, average speed. Yes, I understood. And when you take average, the interval can be big. It can be a finite interval, delta d. In that case, the slope will become actually the, the slope of, there is a dotted line joining P1 and P2, right? You have put a dotted yes. line. So what is the dotted line called? Um, would that be called the displacement? No, no, it's uh, in general terms. Oh, wait, never mind. Oh, okay. It it's just a straight, it's a straight line. Can you call it a chord? Yes, you can actually. Uh, what about secant? Okay, it's either called secant or a chord. Okay. In a circle, you know how to draw a chord, right? Yes, sir. It's similar to that. You can call it either a chord or a secant. So in this time interval, it's a finite. Uh, the slope is actually the slope of the secant. Okay. But when this point P2 comes closer and closer, this dotted line will become what? At point P1. Uh, 
the dotted line will become i think it'll stay the same it'll become tangent uh, so what's the tangent no uh, tangent is a straight line which touches the curve at only one point okay oh okay god or second touches the curve at two points right okay so when this point p2 comes closer and closer this secant will become a tangent Oh, okay. Limiting case. And P two is coinciding with P one. So uh, the slope of the tangent is instantaneous velocity. The slope of the secant is average velocity. Average means between any two time intervals. Instantaneous means at that particular instant. So that is same as saying the time interval is very very small at that particular time. Yes, sir. If you want to find the average speed between five and seven seconds, then I'll take uh, second P one P two. But if you want to find the speed at or the velocity at point at five seconds, I'll go to at five seconds and draw a very very small triangle. In that small triangle, the second will approximately uh, become tangent, and it will tend to tangent in the limiting case. Okay, so the slope of the tangent at P equal to five is the instantaneous velocity at P equal to five. Only to find instantaneous velocity at t equal to seven, I'll, I'll go to point P two and draw a tangent there, and I'll calculate the slope of the tangent. So the slope of the tangent gives the instantaneous velocity, and slope of the secant in a time interval gives the average velocity. Okay, so this difference between average and instantaneous. Okay, here you start yes. instantaneous. What's it? He has put in the limit delta t tending to zero. That happens when p two is approaching p one. When p two is this one, delta t is two seconds. As p two approaches p one, the delta t is tending to zero. Okay, so in that case, in the limiting case, when you find delta x by delta t, that will become that is symbolically represented as dx by dt. Like delta x is a finite interval. And delta t is a finite interval, but when the interval becomes very very small, we represent it that as dx. So in the small interval in time, is represented by dt. So in that limit, delta t into zero, this will will become dx by dt, just a representation. Okay, and this is slope of tangent. Yes, sir. That's what this P two point. Uh, uh, okay, P one and P two. We get the average velocity between P one and P two, and Q one and Q two is still closer. And if you keep on uh, bringing these points closer uh, and make as a single point at point P, that secant is becoming a tangent at point P. So the line connecting P one and P two is secant, and line connecting Q one and Q two is secant, right? But at point P. So it's so it's basically when that line connecting. P one and say any given point intersects with the slope of the graph for that line. No. Then P one and P two come closer, closer. The second and say it becomes it becomes a point at point P. Then the second will just come out right of the curve and it just touch the curve. Yes, yeah, sir. So that's what the chord or second is becoming a tangent, and the slope of the tangent is the instantaneous velocity at point P. And the slope of the second P one P two is the average velocity between the interval P one P two. Yes, sir. Here velocity is changing as a function of time. So here, what is the acceleration in this horizontal part? Top horizontal part. The yeah. acceleration is zero, I think. Okay, and this last part where the line is dropping down. What is acceleration? Acceleration. Well, can I consider the velocity at the top as twenty-five? No, no, don't. Not the exact value. I tell oh, you, okay. it's still negative. It's negative. So it's decelerating. And what about the initial part? It's a curve. It so is accelerating. Positive or negative? Positive. And is it constant? 
Um, no, it's not constant. So what? This is actually a realistic situation. Here the car is starting. Okay, the engine is starting. So when the engine is starting, you'll be injecting more fuel into the engine. So the force with which the engine is uh, pulling the car is not constant. Okay, when force is not constant, acceleration won't be constant. Okay, it's a, it's a realistic situation. That's why, because I told you earlier, acceleration constant is the one we should focus on because non constant acceleration will not uh, be required to consider. But this is just an example of showing the real case where in the, when the car is getting started, we will start pressing the accelerator. So we will be injecting more fuel into the engine. So the force of the engine is increasing. So the acceleration is increasing. Here, if you see the slope, as time increases, it's increasing, right? It's getting more steep. Did you notice that? The slope at this point yes. is compared to here. So the engine is uh, exerting more force. So the acceleration move more here. Okay. Uh, and after this point, the engine is off. Okay. Uh, so the force which is reducing the velocity is constant. And what is that force that is reducing the velocity? Here, the one which is increasing the, the force that reduced the brakes. The brakes. No, brake you just apply at one point and leave it. Um, okay. After that, what is the it reducing the velocity? Reducing the velocity resistance. Friction. Air resistance. Friction. Yeah. Air resistance is one of the things, and friction. Okay, and that is a constant force. Approximately. Yes. And that is why acceleration is constant in this part. Okay, so this is a realistic situation. And this situation corresponds to this graph. Yes, sir. This one. Here the x is changing like this. Okay, and here the velocity is constant because x is a straight function of time. And after that, it again decreases. So this this uh, this curve is parabola. This is uh, more, uh, it is more than a parabola. Because if it's a parabola with an acceleration constant, it could be cubic. Parabola is square, maximum power. This is more than a parabola, so it's, it is cubic. Only if you have cubic, you will get a non constant acceleration. I hope you understand how do you think about it. 